This is the most extreme anti-inflammatory diet I've ever come across for endometriosis and I'm doing it. It's called the AIP diet or autoimmune protocol or maybe paleo if you're from the US. Its main function is to help with both inflammation and gut health. So theoretically, this diet could help my endometriosis, my extreme bloating, heavy periods, acne, and maybe even PMS. In this video, I'm gonna cover five things. Number one, what the AIP diet is. Number two, who's the diet for. Number three, what foods can you eat on this diet because it's insane. Number four, we're gonna cover my first week on the diet and how it went because there were definitely some challenges but it wasn't as hard as I thought. And finally, I'm gonna cover every single question that you sent on Instagram. Enjoy. <laughs> My name is Sophie and I have endometriosis and I've been struggling with the symptoms of it for over 10 years now but I am absolutely determined to get to the bottom of my symptoms because especially over the last three to four years I've realized how much of an impact diet and lifestyle has on my endometriosis and then obviously since blogging about it on Instagram and TikTok so many of you have said exactly the same thing. So recently I was at an endometriosis retreat run by a company called Hold Wellbeing. It was absolutely phenomenal um, and there was an endometriosis specialist surgeon there and also a hormone coach. I will tag the hormone coach here because she's on Instagram and TikTok too. Um, and they were talking about the autoimmune protocol or like I said in the intro, paleo diet maybe if you're from America. Um, and it was basically all about giving yourself an inflammatory and a gut reset. But the nature of the diet is a huge elimination process. And I'm gonna take you through what that is in part three of this video. Um, but essentially you cut out a lot of food and then slowly reintroduce it to see if any of those foods trigger you trigger inflammation or maybe even trigger your endometriosis too. The beauty of the diet is that it also covers other conditions, things like acne, which I really struggle with, PMS, which I also really struggle with. So I'm really, really hoping that doing this diet not only helps my endometriosis, but also all of my other symptoms too. Okay, so what is the AIP diet and who is it for? The clue is in the name, it's called the autoimmune protocol. So yes, it is for people with autoimmune conditions. Endometriosis, which is what I have, is not classified as an autoimmune condition yet. However, loads of doctors actually say that it's basically the same, it just hasn't been classified yet, or that it basically has all of the hallmarks. So anything that would help an autoimmune condition could in theory help endometriosis. But the also other really, really interesting layer to this is that if you have endometriosis, some studies suggest, and one of my doctors told me that you are also more likely to have endometriosis because, um, more likely to have an autoimmune condition, sorry, because your immune system is down, which means you're more susceptible to these conditions, etc., etc. So basically a diet that helps autoimmune conditions could help endo, which is why I am doing the autoimmune protocol. So it's a really, really interesting diet where you do for 30, 60 or 90 days. Don't mistake this for a diet, like a weight loss diet. There is no calorie tracking. There is nothing like that. It is a, an elimination diet of foods that could be inflammatory. That list is very, very long and also very, very weird, which is why I'm going to cover that in the next section. But basically you eliminate all of these foods from your diet. And when I say all, I mean all. Like for example, you can't have nuts or seeds on this diet. If I had a single seed during the diet, I'm done, I need to start again. Because the whole point is that you do a full inflammatory and gut reset. So there is no cheating, there's no cheat meal, there's no I'll have one of this, there's none of that. It is extreme. And the fact that I'm on day eight right now is pretty impressive because I can't stick to anything. And I think there's a few reasons why I've stuck to it, which I'll also cover in this video. But that essentially is what the diet is. That's who it's for. And the reason you do it for 30, 60 or 90 days is just dependent on how long your symptoms stay for. So for me personally, I'm gonna be monitoring my abdominal bloating, my PMS symptoms, my pain during periods, that tugging pain you get with endo, fatigue and also one of the most visual markers is my facial bloating, abdominal bloating, which I think I've already said, and my acne, which um, my facial bloating, stomach bloating and acne has already started to reduce. And I am going into my PMS week now and we'll have my period next week. So I'll be able to talk more about those in next week's video. Let's go into the next section, which is what you can and can't eat on this diet. Okay, even though this is an elimination diet, I would highly recommend, and this is one of my top tips on actually starting and succeeding on the diet, is keeping a list of all the foods you can have rather than just focusing on what you can't. If you see me looking down, it's just because I've got my laptop here, but let's start with what vegetables you can have. So you can have leafy greens, beetroots, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, sweet potato, and butternut squash. Basically anything 
as long as it's not a nightshade vegetable. So I had heard of nightshade vegetables before and I assume that you have too if you are on this video, but I didn't really know what they were. So if you want a list of those, I can give you them now. Tomatoes, potatoes, um, but white potatoes. So white potatoes are a nightshade, you can't have them, but sweet potatoes, you can. Very, very weird in my eyes. There must be something in the biology of it, but yeah, no white potatoes, no aubergine, or you, may, you might call it eggplant if you're American, uh, no chilies, no bell peppers, and no spices that derive from those nightshades. So things like cayenne pepper and paprika, which is a shame because obviously seasoning is such a huge part of food and you basically have access to salt. Give me a second because there's a plane flying over the house and I don't want it to ruin the audio. Okay, I think we're safe. So hopefully you see where I'm coming from. You can basically have all vegetables as long as they're not a nightshade. So that's a really long list of what you can have anyway. Um, but also when you're in the supermarket or before doing your um, shopping list, I would highly recommend just Googling, is this insert vegetable a nightshade and Google will tell you. Um, so all vegetables are on the cards um, and all fruits are on the cards as well. Um, again, as long as they're not nightshades. Um, one caveat with fruit is that a lot of papers suggest that you don't overload on fruit, especially high glycemic index um, fruits. So things like bananas, things like apples, and that was an error that I made in my first week, which I'll mention at the end. I started snacking on those things because my sugar cravings were just like going insane, um, because, spoiler, no sugar, no processed food on this diet. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll just have an apple, I'll just have a banana, but they can be inflammatory too, so try and stay on the lower end of the sugary fruit, so things like um, blueberries, raspberries, those kind of fruits. Then we get to the tough part because these are the kind of foods that I feel like we bulk our uh, meals out with. So there's no grains, no legumes, no beans, no rice, no pasta, no wheat, and no gluten. So you might be wondering what the hell is left when it comes to bulking out your food and um, those carby foods, because carbs are still really, really important. But like I already mentioned at the start, you can have any vegetable as long as it's not nightshade. So sweet potatoes, carrots, butternut squash, those are three perfect example of carbs that you can have on this diet. But as I mentioned, no processed. So no pasta for a long time. Oh my God, there's another plane. I don't know if you can hear this. Okay, but it is good news when it comes to meat and fish. You can have any type of meat, any type of fish, any type of organ meat, if that's your jam. I'm trying to get into organ meats because it's really, really good for you. But just the thought of eating liver makes me feel sick. But then I always love like duck liver, like pate. So I need to find a AIP friendly liver recipe. If I find one, I'll share it. But what I mean is you can have all kinds of meat and fish as long as it is a high quality. So whether it's wild caught, organic, grass fed, you know it, like any of that kind of stuff you can have. So there's no restrictions when it comes to meat, which is a really good one. What else have I got on this very, very long list? Okay, a very sad one for me, a very, very sad one. There's no dairy and there's no eggs. So dairy I don't massively eat anyway, just because I've always known that it was um, something that could be causing acne for me, even though when I cut it out, it didn't really make a difference. Um, but I also don't find, find that it um, agrees with my stomach. And I know a lot of people are like that. So no dairy wasn't a big deal for me. Um, however, I did like butter in things. So no products with dairy in. Um, but there's also no eggs. And if you know me or you follow my Instagram or my TikTok, eggs in my life, I have between two and four every single day for my entire life, like the 27 years that I have been on this earth, I have had eggs every single day. Um, so you can't have eggs because apparently some people are allergic to the egg whites and some people are allergic to the yolk, um, which is really, really important. So you cut them all out. And then when it comes to the reintroduction phase, you actually have to reintroduce them separately to see if you have a problem with one or the other. Um, I thought I would find it really hard cutting out eggs, but I've actually found it okay. And it's all to do with just varying my meals. If you want any um, meal ideas, I am going to be doing another video on that, but also if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, I post all of my food on there too. Um, other things, no processed foods or sugars. So I mentioned that earlier, but I'm just going to take you through the list now. So no additives, no preservatives, no artificial flavorings, no sweeteners, no sugars, nothing. Um, and this is really important and why I come back to this is not a diet in terms of the traditional weight loss diet. This is just an elimination diet. So um, for example, if this was a calorie diet and you were trying to lose weight, you could have a Diet Coke, for example. 
absolutely not on this diet because that has one it's processed two it's full of additives sh sweeteners sugars all of that kind of stuff and um, so you can't have any of that i think that's why this diet is often confused with just a straight paleo diet because a paleo diet is just whole foods i.e if it's one ingredient you can have it and um, but it actually goes one step further than that because obviously you're eliminating a lot of foods that you could have on paleo um which i'll come on to next which are nuts and seeds so you actually can't have any i'm not even going to bother listing any nuts or seeds because you just can't have any of them um so they're totally gone um and when it comes to the reintroduction phase the same as the eggs it's not like you reintroduce almonds and you're fine it's you reintroduce almonds then you reintroduce peanuts then you reintroduce cashews and i know there's a long list of nuts and seeds so if you're doing this diet i would just recommend that you um reintroduce your favorite nuts first and see if those are problematic for you. When it comes to fats, you can have olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, and um, those are the three that I found in my research and those are the three that I cook with and the most popular ones anyway. Um, just a watch out not to use um, fry light, you know, like the spray oils because a lot of them actually have a lot of additives and preservatives in them. So just to have a look at the back of your oil, I just um, buy organic um, olive oil in like a big glass bottle because I know that has nothing in it. Um, but in terms of oils, you can have anything, but when it comes to cooking, I would love to have a bit of butter, but obviously can't because of the dairy. If you are looking to season your food, you can have salt, which is great news, but you can't have pepper. No black pepper, no white pepper, just no pepper at all. So only salt. You can have um, any kind of leafy um, herbs, so like basil, um, coriander, thyme, like all of those things you can absolutely have, like the leafier kind of things or herbs, but you can't have any spices because they um, traditionally derive from things from the nightshade family or they might have pepper in, for example. So I think I already mentioned cayenne pepper, paprika, um, chilies, um, that kind of stuff. But again, like I said earlier, when you're making your shopping list, just Google is and then insert whatever you want to use um okay on the aip diet and google will give you the answer essentially with spices just think is it a leaf is it a herb and you'll be fine i have googled and you can use truffle which is a great win because then you can put truffle oil and stuff like that so that's a really nice one for a flavor too so in summary i know that is a very 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 long and mildly depressing list of things that you can and can't have on this diet but it always kind of just goes back to a good source of protein from meat fish or organ meats a good amount of healthy fibrous foods from vegetables as long as they're not the nightshade ones and you're really not missing out on that much and then when it comes to your carb sources they are just going to be um nature's carbs as dr mindy pals talks about them which will be your carrot your sweet potato and your um, butternut squash none of the other processed stuff so it's a very clean eating diet minus other things that are actually healthy but potentially inflammatory to you so we're talking about eggs and also nightshades i also want to talk about the results that i had over the last seven days so for the first few days i didn't really see that much of a difference and that's just because i think i just spent the, the whole weekend binge eating on sugar and carbs and all of this stuff that my body just doesn't really process very well um when i say carbs i mean like bread and pasta i'm not talking about sweet potato so um i just wasn't feeling very well so it took a few days for anything to really kick in and i think it wasn't until because I do I do morning and evening updates on TikTok and Instagram it wasn't until I was reading some of the comments and some of my followers were like your face has changed so much your skin has changed so much and then I looked at my before and after pictures and I was like oh my god like this has happened in seven days this is insane so that's one cool thing. My skin is definitely getting better. My inflammation is getting better. I will caveat that with I'm now going into PMS week. So I just assume that all of that is going to go away. But it's a cool little experiment to see if the diet would work that quickly on my period. Knowing what I do about periods because I'm studying to be a menstrual health coach, I don't think it will have an impact on my period until next month because your period and the symptoms are a result of like a few months worth of lifestyle changes. So seven to eight days of a new diet probably isn't going to help me this month sadly but there we go it'll be fine next month um other than that i've also been tracking my weight so my weight has dropped but again it would have because i had a massive binge eating session on the weekend with my boyfriend where we just ate everything in london um to then this elimination diet i'm not tracking calories because it's not a weight loss diet at all um so i'm just monitoring my weight to see if it stays the same if it goes down if it goes up it's just an interesting one to track. So yes, I have lost weight on this diet. I've lost almost four kilos in seven days. Um, but again, my weight also started much higher. So it was kind of like a false weight to start off with. But I will keep updating you um, every week on what my weight is and how that's going. 
one thing that has been really, really difficult, but it's only really a struggle Saturday and Sunday, or to be honest with you, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, is going out, socialising, doing all of that stuff. That's basically impossible on this diet. And when I say impossible, you can obviously go to events, but you can't join in in the same way that you would have, or at least I found that. So for example, my boyfriend plays rugby, so we go and watch, there's always Prosecco there, there's always snacks couldn't have any of that. And I'm not a big drinker anyway, but I will kind of cradle and sip on a glass of Prosecco, which I enjoy. Um, can't do that. Can't have like the little cakes and the little pastries that were there. So that was like a sad moment for me because I love that kind of stuff. And then Saturday and Sunday, me and my boyfriend were sat on the sofa and we were just looking at each other and we were like, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Because we always go for brunch and I know it's really bad, but we'll probably go for dinner as well or order a takeaway. So, um, can't do any of that. So we were like, fuck. So we ended up just doing like loads of walking and loads of like wholesome stuff. Like we went for a sauna and a steam together and all of that stuff. Um, so it's weird that like, the elimination diet has actually had quite a wholesome impact on all of the other stuff. Cause I found myself doing a little bit more exercise and all of that kind of stuff because I just can't socialize in any other way. Um, but other than that, I feel like it's something that I'm willing to sacrifice because like I said at the start, this is a 30, 60 or 90 day situation it's not forever it's for my endometriosis which is a huge thing for me and potentially like my fertility in the future which is what I always think about I have frozen my eggs um, I'm going to make lots of content on that so I'm not too stressed about my fertility but I would like to be able to conceive naturally and I know that a huge part of that is managing inflammation so that's how the first week went. I know from my DMs and comments on Instagram and TikTok, a lot of people wanna see like more of vlog style content rather than a sit down chat after this video. So all of this week, I'm gonna be bringing you along, making my meals with me. I'm gonna show you how I batch cook because that's been a huge game changer for this diet in terms of like meal prepping because I feel like when you don't meal prep on something like this, that's when you might slip up. Um, I'm gonna share how my gym sessions are going because they are so up and down right now because my energy has been so low on some of the days that I've got to the gym and I've barely done anything so I'll document more of that and just basically bring you along a little bit more um, and especially show you what food I'm eating because I've given you like a long list of foods but when it comes to making those into interesting meals it can be really really difficult and I've absolutely nailed it I'm going to put on the screen a couple of my favorite meals that I have made slash my boyfriend has made on this diet they've been unbelievable and I just feel like I haven't been missing out at all which I think is again I mentioned I was going to share tips on how to start and succeed on this diet it's absolutely a tip is to make sure you have really tasty food that makes you feel like you're not missing out. Okay and as promised the final part of this video is answering all of the questions that you sent to me on Instagram. Um, so let's get to it. Can you have matcha? No, it's part of the whole green tea leaf which you can't have. Um, how to do it when you're trying to build muscle at the gym, for example 140 grams of protein per day. Honestly, this diet, my protein has never been higher, which is odd because I love free soul protein powder. I used to have it every single day and I can't have it as part of this elimination process. I love it, it's gonna be one of the first things I reintroduce, but I was worried about my protein intake. But because in the morning I can't have my eggs, I've had to swap it for things like chicken or um, turkey mince, and my protein intake has actually been much higher. Um, so don't worry about protein intake. Um, da, 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 da. is dairy or eggs um, can it cause sorry I'm just trying to understand this question okay so basically can you have dairy and eggs no unfortunately you can't because they do upset some people's tummies um, so they are cut out of the diet and then of course after you're done with the diet you reintroduce them separately um, so you would do like egg whites then you would do egg yolks and then you would do dairy so you could start with milk then go on to yogurt etc etc um, can I do a shopping list? So yes, absolutely I will do a shopping list and that's gonna actually be in my vlog video because I'm gonna bring you to the supermarket with me with my long list, which is actually going to be a shopping list for all of the meals. So I'll give you a weekly rundown of my meals and then also a weekly shopping list to go with those meals. So yes, no problem at all. Are you cutting out all grains, including corn and rice? Yes, I am. It's part of the diet, unfortunately. So basically all of my carbs are sweet potato, carrots and butternut squash. Um, can you share a list of foods to avoid and also meal ideas? So yes, so food to avoid, I've already answered. And meal ideas, um, I've actually made a highlight on Instagram of all of the meals that I've been doing. But like I said, next week is gonna be a vlog, all of the foods. So yes, just subscribe, comment, like, and it will be in the next video. Um, what exactly can you eat? Already covered that. Um, exactly what you can eat, yes. So everyone wants to know what I'm eating. So I'll make sure that I prioritize that in the vlog video. Can you do it on your own or do you need a dietitian? 
for that. So this is totally up to you. I would highly, 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 highly recommend that you do it with someone. I am training to be a menstrual health coach and it's actually part of the course that I'm doing and I'm also doing so much research around it. So I feel pretty comfortable doing it around, um, doing it on my own, sorry, because I track my food. So I know if I'm having enough protein, carbs, like veg, all of that kind of stuff. Um, if you're not confident, I would genuinely, genuinely recommend getting a health coach and someone that I would recommend is the person that I tagged at the start of this video, Kirsty, she's brilliant. Ask away, she's done the AIP herself, so she'll know a lot about it. But yes, I would recommend doing it with someone if you can afford to do it and if you don't feel comfortable or if you haven't done the research yourself. Next question, how are the cravings, energy levels, headaches and uh, withdrawal from caffeine? So I've already touched on this in the video, but my withdrawal and my cravings have been pretty decent, to be honest with you. If I couldn't have fruit on this diet at all, I think I'd have struggled a lot more. Um, however, they've been okay. My energy levels is definitely something I've struggled with. They have been like throughout the whole week and I'm really hoping they pick up this week. Unfortunately, I'm going into PMS week, so that's probably not likely, but I can hope. Um, energy levels haven't been great, but they've been fine. It's just that when I go to do like a high energy thing, say at like two or three o'clock, like if I went to the gym right now, because it's now coming up to four o'clock, I'd really, really struggle. Um, so yeah, energy in the gym wise, zero, but like day to day doing tasks and working has been fine. But I've had another couple of questions about doing um, realistic recipes and how much I'm spending on this diet, which again, I'll cover in the next video. And then the last question is, I'd love to know about the coffee side of things impact changes and how's it been for your well-being so coffee um for me has been like a ritual like i've always loved having a coffee on my walk but since doing this menstrual health coaching course a huge part has been um learning that maybe starting my day with a coffee is not the best um at least um before having a meal so really you should be having your breakfast and then your coffee so that you don't encourage your cortisol levels to rise which is your stress hormone and stress is something that i'm desperately trying to manage so um my stress levels have actually been really really good and I am wondering whether it has something to do with that um, I do find it really really difficult because for me like seeing a friend or meeting someone or a brand that I work with is always let's go to a nice coffee shop or let's go to a restaurant and have a meal or have a coffee or whatever so not being able to do that kind of stuff has been difficult but for my overall well-being I actually think it's been very very positive for me it's just that certain social situations have been challenging but because I talk so openly on social media about what I'm doing with this diet everyone's actually been really really supportive and also remember, this is not permanent. This is a short-term elimination phase. Um, if this was like a forever lifestyle change, I think I'd be pretty depressed right now not being able to have all of those foods. So overall, it's been going really, really well. So thank you again for all of your questions and also for watching this video. If you do have any questions, just comment them below on this video. Um, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm super, super active on there and I can reply to you really, really quickly because I only come onto YouTube once a week to upload these videos and reply to your comments. So definitely give me a follow over there. And thanks again for watching. If you are starting the AIP diet, a best of luck. It could be one of the best things you do for your endometriosis. I'm absolutely finding out that myself. And thanks again. See you next week.